Hey there, welcome to Studio 5. We've got a wonderful show ahead. Filmmaker Sean Durkin takes us inside his journey to bring the film Iron Claw to the big screen. A Grammy award-winning producer and composer, Michael Manny, is here with us. And an NFL player shares his commitment to his faith on and off the field. Want to begin, though, with Iron Claw. It is the big screen film based on the true story of the Von Erich brothers who make history in the competitive world of professional wrestling in the early 1980s. It is an intense story of trial, triumph, and tragedy. It stars Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and Harris Dickinson. And it's directed by Sean Durkin. The Iron Claw is a true story about the Von Erich brothers, the biggest rock stars in wrestling to ever come out of Texas. They were just godlike all over the world. They were like superheroes. So I think it's all about trust when you have to learn a lot at once. And we were training with these professional wrestlers, and it was demanding. Because you have to really commit to that fool. Yeah, and like hitting the mat over and over and over again. The last time I jumped up so high over the ring, and I'm looking at him like, this is gonna suck. Remember, I hit super hard, and I look up, and I see this guy, he stands up and goes, oh, now you're flying, boy. The support and true love between the brothers, that was really special. It didn't feel like any other film I've ever worked on before. Harris, Zach, and I, there's a brotherhood now. Well, when I was a kid, I was really into wrestling and um, discovered them through sort of reading about, you know, reading about them in magazines and, and getting some old VHS tapes. People said my family was cursed. Mom tried to protect us with God. Pop tried to protect us with wrestling. And I thought it was so much of so much of what I'm interested in. Um, it's it's complicated family dynamics. It is generational trauma and this notion of a curse and what that really means. Um, and you know, questioning where we come from and what we believe. And um, you know, and then also looking at the you know, the inner emotional life of a wrestler versus the, the public emotional life of a wrestler. I believed him. We all did. I think I'm really drawn to the intricacies of friend, friendship and brotherhood. Um, I don't have a lot of brothers, but I have a group of friends who feel like brothers. Um, and so, uh, and especially growing up playing a lot of sports um, and being on teams, there was a camaraderie there. That was something I always wanted to revisit in filmmaking. I want you to join your brothers in the ring. Yes, sir. I love that. Woo! Now, we all know Carrie's my favorite, then Kev, then David, then Mike. But the rankings can always change. I'm always interested in father-son stories. I was interested in that dynamic, especially because it's a very nuanced dynamic. I, I believe that, you know, even if, even if Fritz is extremely hard on the boys i believe he's doing it all with love i think i think he thinks everything he's giving them is to help them survive in the world you know he says it in the beginning like if if you're the the, the biggest the toughest the strongest the most successful nothing can hurt you and i think that that's where he comes from he believes because of where he came from and how he survived um he believes that the way for his boys to survive is to that so it's to, to do that so he's pushing them to reach those heights, to succeed in wrestling. Um, but he also loves being with them. Together, we can do anything. We're here to restore justice to the wrestling federation that our father built with his own two hands. The hands that were passed down to us, the hands that will deliver the iron claw to you. And the boys are driven by, you know, in some ways that drive that, that comes from their father, that, that need to succeed. I talked to you about something, Mom. Dad's too tough on us. You gotta say something. You know, also wanted to look really honestly at the tragedy and how that psychological effect, effect of that, um, you know, wears on our main character, Kevin. Uh, but also then the rise, like how does Kevin survive? Ah, you feel that? Ah. That's pressure. You need to push it too hard. I'm fine, Kev, seriously, I'm just sick. So it was, yeah, it was, it was the only way forward was to, you know, without shying away from the tragedy, just embracing this, the, the, the sort of wonderful love between the brothers and then also ending it in a place where Kevin's moving forward to the future that he, that he did have. I just love being out there with you guys. It's the only thing that matters to me. Iron Claw is in theaters right now.
He's the composer of some familiar sounds in the entertainment industry, such as this. He's worked with several celebrities, including singer and songwriter Tori Kelly. Is it safe to say Michael Mani discovered Tori Kelly? In a way, I, 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 helped her, I helped her on her journey at a point. God's hand was on Tori Kelly. She's very talented and was probably one of the greatest singers I've had a chance to work with. We're sitting down with Grammy Award-winning composer and producer Michael Manny. Next. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. Hey, welcome back to Studio 5. Michael Manny is a Grammy Award winning composer and producer who has worked with the likes of Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, and Eric Clapton, just to name a few. He's in Studio 5 this week to talk about his art and the highs and lows of the business. Grammy Award winning Michael Manny. What made you say yes to the Echoes of Creation Conference? It came through a very good friend of mine. And when she calls, I know it's something really interesting or uh, spirit connected. And I know God's behind it when she calls and invites us to things. I fell right in line with what my thoughts and principles are with how I make music and why I make music and how God and Jesus are behind it. And why do you make music? I have a passion for it. I, I grew up uh, in, a, in a spiritual household and a musical household. <laughs> My mother was uh, taught catechism at church and also was a classical pianist. And when we got a piano uh, in our house when I was seven, she would notice when she was making dinner that the notes that she was playing earlier were starting to come from the living room. And she recognized at an early age that I had a, a good ear. Through that, realized that I had this gift and this passion for playing music and piano and I started to improvise. And it's just something I always love to do. And that's as I, age and got older and more mature, I realized that God's behind that. Looking back, what would you say is the lowest low on this musical journey? Oh, God. Uh, which, one? which one? There's been some lows. I've had artists stolen from me. I've uh, driven all the way down to LA and auditioned for rock bands to find out that they needed a singer and not a keyboard player. How about the highest high? Uh, I found a young artist named Becky G. and. We had developed some songs for her, and I was at a label meeting at RCA Records and with Rady Hancock. So we got back to LA. We got a phone call from a producer named Dr. Luke, who had had like 41 number one hits with Katy Perry and Britney and all sorts of people. So we knew who, very well who he was. So he said, Can you come over to my house in Hollywood? So we got in the car, got Becky, went over to his house, and within 10 minutes, he offered us a record deal on his brand new label called Kimasabi Records. And I think I, I floated out of that room. But there's been a couple moments in my career that was probably one of the highest. What's your connection to Tori Kelly? Tori Kelly, uh, I was working for a, a record producer named Nardo Michael Walden. I don't know if you remember, he produced uh, Aretha Franklin and Mariah Carey with Houston. And he was in my backyard. He kind of gave me my start. That's a whole other story. But um, I had met a couple young songwriters, and as a keyboard player and music arranger, I need a lyricist, and one of the guys in that band was a lyricist. His mother at one point, we started working together, his mother at one point said, you have to see this young girl, this young lady on YouTube, and she showed us a video of Tori Kelly. She was 12 years old singing in this little talent contest. So we reached out to her through YouTube, got a hold of her parents, and the parents came over with Tori, and we ended up, I, before she got there, I kind of came up with some chords, and it was my partner came up with a lyric called My Song. So we wrote it for her and she sang it and it just clicked. It was just one of those divine moments. I always know when God's opening a door or connecting me to something. There's just a feeling you get. And everything just goes so well when God's part of it. And I try to do things on my own and it never happens. I could work six months on something, it does not happen. God, God says it's so and it happens in about 20 minutes. It, I have so many of those moments in my life that it's undeniable when God's hands on it, and God put Tori Kelly in our life. So who else have you worked with on this musical journey? All right, Carrie, Whitney Houston, who else? When I moved to LA, I met Nick Cannon, and I had built, one of the things that God told me to do was build a recording facility, and I didn't have the money for it, but somehow it materialized, and I found a contractor to help me build out a five-room 
music production facility in North Hollywood. And I had met Nick Cannon through some meetings and he needed help with some music production. So we became friends with my partner and we started producing music for Nick. And through that, Mariah would come through the studio. We worked on a couple pet projects with them. Nice. So that was fun. So what was it like to win the Grammy for Instrumental Song of the Year? For me, it's, I see all these series of things and doors that he opens up. And all of the work and love, I wake up and feel like there's nothing to do. I'm not gonna make a dollar, but I'm gonna go make a beat. I'm gonna go make some music. It's all that training that when that door opens that I'm ready for that opportunity that God's given me and I can do the best I can. And you can follow the work of Michael Manny by going to his website at mikemanny.com. We've got to take a quick break, but before we do, it's time to share this week's story and pictures. Here's your Studio 5 snapshot. We take this moment to remember Dexter King, the youngest son of famed civil rights leaders Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King. Dexter died this week after a battle with pancreatic cancer and just a few days before his 63rd birthday. He was named after Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, the place where his father began his pastoring career. Dexter, like his siblings, spent his life upholding his father's legacy, and he served as the chairman of the King Center, which continues the family's fight for nonviolent change. Dexter King is this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Still ahead, here's the NFL elite free safety sharing how Jesus set him free. Your walk is going to dictate your character and your destiny and how you move throughout your life. So the faith journey is relying on God, but there's things that we got to do as well. Pittsburgh's Minka Fitzpatrick joins Studio 5 and talks about his pre-game tradition, his keen intuition, and his hard work ethic. Welcome back to Studio 5. The Pittsburgh Steelers' Minka Fitzpatrick knows God has greatly gifted him. He also knows to whom much is given, much is required. We've got a closer look at his story in this week's Studio 5, Faith on the Field. Pittsburgh itself is a blue collar, you know, hard working, family oriented city. The Steelers reflect that as well in the way that we play, in the way that the organization is run. That's how I am as, as, as a man and as a player. I come from a blue collar family, family centered. Pittsburgh was a, a perfect fit. God definitely you know, made it happen for a reason. What makes Minka unique, I think, is he can play all over the field. He is professional through and through, and, and when he's on your side, you feel confident. His leadership is more of a walk than talk. I'm proud to call him a brother in Christ. Jesus Christ free, this free safety. God has gifted me uh, with, with a lot for sure in my physical ability, but he's also uh, entrusted me with a lot in regards to my preparation and, and my responsibilities. Prepare as if it is an honor. You prepare as if it is a great responsibility. And then your result is reflected of your walk throughout the week. And that's kind of what I pride myself on. The faith journey is relying on God, but there's things that we got to do as well. He places things within our reach and not within our hand for a reason that require us to get closer to him in order to, to get through those things. I always pray that the, the stadium becomes a place of worship of God and not of, of men. His faith and he has a firm foundation in Christ and so, you know, God has given him and blessed him with the abilities and talents that he has. He truly plays for and, um, you know, glorifies God and all that he does and so it's so cool having a teammate like that. I feel like Mink is finding his spiritual voice on this team leadership, accountability, holding guys to not just the standard of football, but also the standard of Jesus. And he's helping guys stay in that. It's, it's leadership. I think great leaders create great leaders. My coach in high school, Coach Hanson, was great at that. Coach Saban in college was great at that. Coach T is great at that. They're winning coaches for a reason, uh, because they, they hold people to a high standard, whether they like it or not. All of us become better men. And the better man you are, I believe the better player you'll be. We got a cross with the crown of thorns. And then uh, around it says, take up your cross and follow me. One of the greatest commandments is love your neighbor as yourself for a reason. When you do that, you create a peace and a softness in other people's hearts and love them as, as we would like to be loved. Break bread with them, understand them, and then we'll have opportunities to pour into them. I've had a lot of time to reflect on my journey, on my, on my faith walk. In the story of Job, 
was a guy that had everything and had everything taken away from him. But at the end of the day, he still praised. God showed him the entire universe and said, who are you to, to question my, my ways? My identity is, is, is tied up in being a son of God. And if I lose sight of that, then I'm, I'm gonna struggle through this journey. Every day is a fight, every day is a battle. I gotta lean on him. I gotta trust in him. I'm a young man, I'm still learning, I'm still growing. The only thing that I know is for sure is, is Jesus, is Christ, is that I'm forgiven, is that I'm loved, that uh, you know I have a savior in him. So I get to fight with him and in him. In 2015, ESPN ranked Fitzpatrick the number four cornerback in the nation, and the Associated Press voted him the top safety in the league. You're back in Studio 5, where music helps us to bring you this show each and every week. And this week's soundtrack comes from Justin Bieber. He's got a new single in the new year. Take a listen, and you'll hear why Last Love is what's playing in my ear this week. On that musical note, we are running out of time for this week's edition of Studio 5. So let's look ahead for a moment and see what's coming up on next week's Rundown. It's time. Are you saying giving alms is more important than being ritually I'm clean? I'm saying that your obsession with what is clean and unclean was farther than God intended. It's time for season four of The Chosen. What wondrous love is this? Oh, my Listen soul. carefully to my words. Studio 5 goes behind the scenes for an exclusive first look through the eyes of the cast and the crew. What wondrous love is this? Oh, my soul. My followers won't understand. The Son of Man must suffer many things, but you are the Son of God. Be sure and join us for that story and much more next week. This week we've got time for just one more thing. We want to give that to Michael Manning. What's been the biggest lesson on faith in the work you do? I feel like we have an enemy and He's very intertwined in the music industry. I've seen him and he's stolen things from me all the time. Um, and through our obedience, we can defend against him. So I think my walk with, with God and the blessings that he has in store for all of us, I think through our obedience, then we capture those blessings and we can hold on to them and nobody can steal them. And that goes not just in music, but I think in any, anything you're trying to pursue. But I think, God is, is the essence of creativity. I think the first line in the Bible is God created the heavens and the earth, and he loves to create, and I think his gift to us is creation. He allows us to create, not just with music, but we can, we can create children and, and paintings and, and poems, and, and God, I think God's ultimate joy is to create. And so the blessings that come from those things, um, I appreciate, I know when I'm trying to do it myself, and I know when God his hands on it, and I know when his voice is commanding me to do things, too. Michael Manny, that is a great word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. So until next time, make time to uplift someone around you, and then please come on back. See where Studio 5 takes you next week. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.